this project, we are going to simulate the airflow around the NACA 0008 airfoil. This project is going to simulate an airfoil in the airflow field by ANSYS Fluent Software. Geometric defining parameters include court line angle of attack, leading edge and trailing edge. The direction of the airflow into the body is defined by the angle of attack, which is the angle between the court and the horizontal direction of the airflow velocity. The purpose of this project is to investigate the behavior of airflow and pressure distribution as well as to study drag and lift forces. In the present case, the angle of attack is set equal to 16 degrees and the length of cord and the width of the airflow are assumed to be equal to 1. Thus, to determine the drag force, the length of the cord must be multiplied by the sinus of 16 and to define the lift force, the cord length must be multiplied by cosinus of 16 degrees. Airfoil selection is one of the earliest and most important decisions made when designing your UAV, airplane, etc. The airfoil will play a large role in determining its aerodynamic performance characteristics and capabilities. As such, care should be taken to choose an airfoil that properly meets the performance requirements for your mission. Relevant requirements may relate to stability, lift and drag characteristics, and manufacturability. These and other important concepts will be discussed. To start, let's discuss the different parts of an airfoil. As you can see below, an airfoil typically has thin, long profile. This provides a large amount of lift with minimal drag. The front or forwardmost part is called the leading edge, while the back or aftmost part is called trailing edge. If you were to draw a straight line from edge to edge, this would be called the cord line and its length is the cord length or just the cord. 2D geometry of the present model is drawn using design motor software. First, the coordinates of the points in the wall forming of the desired airfoil are imported to the software. And then, using the call points, it is completely drawn in the software. The far field boundary required for the analysis of airflow behavior is then drawn around the airfoil according to the relevant standards. The meshing of the present model has been done using ANSYS meshing software. The mesh type is unstructured and the element number is equal to 296,533. Now the first step for you to start the simulation is to click on the fluid flow block and then drag it over a blank space in ANSYS Workbench software. Next, right click on mesh and then go over import mesh file. Then click on Browse and then select the mesh file that is sent to you with the rest of the files. Now just like any other type of project, we have several assumptions in this project as well. The first one is that we have selected the pressure based type of solving for our model since we are dealing with incompressible well flows. Second, we have selected absolute format for velocity formulation. And third, we have selected a steady time study since we didn't want our results to be a function of time. Also, because we have a two-dimensional geometry, we have selected planner under the 2D space. The next step, expand the model section and then double-click on the viscous button. Now, in the appeared window, you can see we have selected RNG K epsilon model to solve our turbulent fluid equation, since this model is more accurate than the standard one. Also, under the near wall treatment, you can see we have selected enhanced wall treatment, which are auxiliary functions that help us capture the boundary layer and flow patterns near the wall. In the next step, if you double click on the boundary conditions button in the middle part of the software window, click on inlet boundary. Then, under the type section, you will see the type of this boundary is defined as velocity inlet. By clicking on Edit button, you can change the settings related to this boundary. In the appeared window in front of the velocity magnitude, you can see the value we have entered as the velocity of the airflow entering the computational domain. Next, if you click on the outlet boundary, you can see the type of this boundary is defined as pressure outlet. Just like the previous boundary, click on Edit button. Now, in this window, the most important point you should pay attention to is the gauge pressure, which has the value of 0 Pascal, meaning that the airflow will exit the computational domain to the atmosphere. And then, as for the final boundary, click on Surface Body and then click on Edit button. Then, in the appeared window, you can see stationary wall motion along with no slip shear condition are defined.
As was previously discussed, in this section you have to enter the right values for area and velocity in order to correctly calculate the coefficients of lift force and drag force. After double clicking on the method, you will see that a new window will appear showing you the pressure velocity coupling. Also, you, will, you can see that uh, the special discretization methods are shown in this window. Also, you can change the discretization into other formats, like you can change them into first order advent and the other options available for each variable under their combo list. And for the simple pressure velocity coupling, uh, the simple algorithm is kind of an iterative solver which uses a relationship between velocity and pressure correction to enforce mass conservation and to obtain the pressure field. After double clicking on the controls button, in the middle section of the software window, you can see that new part will appear. In the appear part, you can see under relaxation factors for different parameters. Now these values are set here by the software automatically. You can change these values which are between 0 and 1 by yourself for different projects you do. But it is highly recommended that you do not do that since it may result in divergence. There are two ways to check that your simulation process have reached convergence or not. Alongside checking the residuals reaching and nearing zero, you may define an arbitrary report or an arbitrary boundary in order to calculate different parameters like pressure, velocity, temperature, and see whether they reach a constant value or not. If yes, it may be a sign that your simulation process have reached convergence. However, you must check the residuals as well. To create such report, you can simply right-click on Report Definitions, go over New, and select one of the options available based on your simulation. For example, in this project, if I expand the report definitions, you can see multiple reports are defined here. If I double-click on the first report, which is named as Lift Force, now, in the appeared window, under the report output type, you can see a lift coefficient report is defined over the thousands of surface body, which is the surface of the airfoil. Also, make sure that you pay attention to the force vector section, in which we have entered the value of 1 under the y direction, as we have entered the value of x as 0. This is because the lift force is exerted on the surface of the airfoil perpendicular to the airflow direction. While if I double click on the drag force, which is the second report, in this window you can see a drag coefficient is defined again over the surface of the airfoil. However, this time the difference is that we have entered the value of x direction equal to 1, while we have set the value of y direction equal to 0, meaning that we want to calculate the force exerted on the surface of the airfoil parallel to the airflow direction. After double clicking on the residuals button, a new window will appear. In the appear window, you can see the absolute criteria for equations like continuity, x velocity, y velocity, and so on. Now, when you set the software to start the simulation, there would be error between each iteration. Now, if that error is less than this criterion, it conveys the meaning that uh, that equation has reached convergence. After double clicking on the initialization button, a new window will appear. In the appeared window, you will see that hybrid initialization method has been chosen, uh, which means that an average is taken from different part of the computational domain, and these averages are set to be the first and initializing values for our simulation. After double clicking on the wrong calculations button in the appeared section under the parameters part by just defining the number of iterations and then clicking on calculate button, the software will start the simulation process. After the simulation was finished, in order to extract graphical data, just expand the graphics, go over controls, right click on it, and then select new. 
In the appeared window under the contours of section, you can select your desired variable. For example, in this slide, you can see we have selected the pressure. Simply click on save or display button so that the software will show you the pressure contour. Now in this slide, you can see the pressure distribution inside our computational domain and around the surface of our airfoil. Also, in order to extract another graph called data, you can simply change the contours of section, for example, from pressure to velocity, and simply, just like the previous step, click on Save or Display button. Now, in this slide, you can see the velocity distribution inside our computational domain. Also, you can easily see the wake which is generated behind the surface of our airfoil because of its angle of attack. In the next step, in order to extract graphical data related to turbulence parameters, you just have to change the velocity to turbulence, and then underneath it, change it, for example, to turbulent kinetic energy. And now in this slide, you can see the turbulent kinetic energy changes inside our computational domain around the airfoil. So if you wish to extract the path lines or streamlines of the airflow around the surface of our airfoil, you can simply right-click on path lines and then select new. In the appeared window under the release from surface section, simply select inlet boundary and then click on save or display button. And now in this slide you can see the path lines of our airflow passing over the surface of the airfoil. Now as for the final step, in order to extract definite values for lift and drag forces or coefficients, simply expand the reports and then double click on the forces. In the appeared window under the options, make sure that forces is selected and then under direction vector as was previously discussed in order to extract the drag force, set the value of x direction equal to 1 while you set the value of y equal to 0. And then under the wall zone section, select surface body and then click on print. In order to extract the lift force, change the direction vector by setting the value of x equal to 0 while setting the value of y equal to 1. Now as you can see in this slide, the first force is related to the drag force, which you can understand by its direction vector. In here, you can see the details of calculations of the drag force. Also under the coefficients, you can see the total value of the drag coefficient. As you can probably guess here now, this force, the second force, is related to the lift force, understanding it by its direction vector. Just like the previous force, you can see the details of the calculation of the lift force and the coefficient of the lift force here. Now that you have the values of the lift coefficient and the drag coefficient along with having the angle of attack, you can put those values here and validate the data obtained by our CFD simulation. Finally, a summary of the settings and setup that we have used in our project is presented in this slide. To benefit from Mr. CFD services, including simulation, consultation, and training, contact our experts via info at mrcfd.com.